Hey, welcome folks. How the heck are you? It's Carl and here's another episode of Carl's Journey Diaries, Cancer Edition, Prostate Update. Okay. <sighs> How are you guys? We just finished Veterans Day. Oh, by the way, today is 11-15. 2022 and i welcome you to my channel and this episode uh i also want to give a shout out to uh miss linda out there in the north bay uh it's her birthday today so let's all give a shout to linda and uh i'm gonna try to make this a short one i'm still kind of learning all the nuances for editing and even how I present myself online, it's uh, it's pretty wild. Anyway, Pepper, you might hear her running around. I'm gonna keep it real. But anyway, uh, let's let's give a a, a quick recap. Uh, I had prostate surgery in uh, August or June, July. Oh, I know it was in the summer. Anyway, had prostate a radical prostatectomy where the uh, lymph node was i mean the prostate was taken out they also took out two lymph nodes uh they didn't find any residual ca uh, cancer until i did a after surgery big time uh several mm, six, almost two months they did a psa blood test and found out that my psa level was uh rising uh or it had it hadn't gone all the way down like they anticipated uh, it should have been between 0, 0.0 and 0. I think 0. 0.2 or something uh, of that nature. Anyway, got the referral out to Travis Air Force Base in 11-14 uh, was my first meeting with the doctor out at uh, Travis. Uh, props out to everybody. It was so oh, had such a rough day. My person that uh, was going to give me a ride has been tremendously sick from this flu. And I didn't want her uh, traveling. So, I, you know, I made the decision to take myself out there. It, it was pretty fine. Uh, you know, drove out to Travis. Uh, never been on post by myself. I was always sponsored. Uh, just for uh, update for you veterans. If you bring your VA card with a service connection disability, and it says that on your VA health card, you are allowed to go on post, you are allowed to shop and use the facilities on post. Uh, you have to register your card first at the visitor center just before the main gate. Uh, there is two gates at Travis. Uh, there's, well, there's probably more, but the two that are readily available are the main entrance, which is open 24-7, and that's right off of uh, Air Base Parkway in Fairfield. The second is the entrance going into uh, the hospital area right there. So, And that's where I my journey starts is, you know, all of that stuff that happened. And I was sick and I was rushing. And uh, uh, as most of you know, I took the hormone treatment shot several weeks back and uh seems over the last two weeks uh, <laughs> uh over the last two weeks all these symptoms have just tremendously started occurring the worst being uh an itchy itching that i don't know where the heck the itching is coming from it's just you know i'm scratching myself and hey i i, I have no nails so I'm glad I'm not scratching myself to death. Uh, here's a funny part to that uh, side effect of uh, Elagard, uh, uh, ADT, antigen deprivation therapy drug, Elagard. And, and, you know, that's basically a hormone treatment to reduce the male hormone cells. And, and, and for everybody out there, I'm not a doctor. I'm not credentialed to do this. I'm telling you just my straight up experience. So. No head trips, no nothing. This is just Carl's journey. And I'm sharing to you, and if any part of that journey actually can support you, it's real cool. Because what I'm trying to do is uh, live a whole new life uh, and be happy. You know, uh, 
I've been in recovery. I, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, oh, wow, I'm saying it out there. Uh, yeah, and it's had some bad stuff, but uh, I've got four years uh, sober, and it's all because of uh, a lot of the support systems that I put into place for me. Uh, it's also my way of life doesn't have to be yours, but there's a better way than for anyone out there drinking. And uh, if you feel me, you need support of that, you know, give me a holler. I'll, I'll tell you a few things of what I did. It seems to be working. It's also helping me deal with this prostate cancer uh, treatment and this journey that I'm facing right now. Uh, hormones, once again, the, the <laughs> mood swings. Uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's been it's come to play that I've got a lot of anxiety. Uh, I'm high strung and then I come down and then I'm cold and when it's hot and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually sweating when it's cold. So uh, a lot of side effects, the itching, the, uh, the gaining weight, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of weird. It's not that I'm gaining a whole lot of weight. Uh, I'm trying to manage my weight during this whole journey. Uh, what's occurred is the fact that uh, uh, I'm gaining weight in weird areas. And women, come on now, I, you know, I, I, I want you to know it. Hey, uh, this whole treatment is affecting a lot of my manhood, my biological biologics of being me, a heterosexual male, right? And so what's occurred is uh, I just told this is this is crazy. Uh, Anyway, uh, some of the weight I'm getting is kind of in my my thigh areas, the under thigh, the under thigh here. And actually, there's an area between my belly button and, and, and my genital. Is, is I, I call it a pooch area. And women, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that a tough place to lose weight i'm going what do i do oh my god and then if i don't eat i get dizzy and oh, I, I, uh, uh. anyway i'm going to specifically tell you today about the journey i had i was frustrated i had things going i was anxious and you know uh i had to get on base and uh, learn that process of getting on base and you know get, and find out come to find out that there was something wrong with my va uh, veterans card even though it had service connected there Something happened, so I'm going to have to go back and figure out what to do. Uh, they did give me a temporary visitor's pass since I will be doing treatment out there uh, at Travis. And it's going to be a treatment which I, I, I'll give you the outcome right now. Uh, what ends up is that I'm going to be going in for roughly two months of uh, external beam therapy. And 1114 was the date that I had my initial planning session it wasn't the day that I was going to get some of the beam uh, radiation. But what occurred right now was that I got to meet with my uh, radi uh, uh, radiation oncologist, doctor, the doctor, and uh, the treatment team who are, I, first of all, I want to give uh, kudos to uh, definitely uh, the, the office management, you know, the office, uh, people take care of you. Okay. The reception and they were amazing. And then, uh, one thing I learned, it was, uh, Travis air force base is definitely an active air force base. And this, uh, medical center out there is actually, uh, I had some active duty military, uh, officers as my doctor. And it was kind of ironic to see, uh, some of these females, uh, the doctor, a couple other people in, in uh, what I would call it was fatigues, but I, I think this new generation or whatever these things are called are BDUs, uh, you know, excuse me if I don't have the right terminology, but, you know, actually, I, I, it is. so anyway, the doctor sat with me, uh, did some, uh, <clears throat> we did some paperwork, uh, you know, approvals, release of information, anything that I needed to do to begin the treatment. Uh, let me tell you with my anxiety, I was so sick. You won't believe this. So a doctor came out and the doctor had these, these wonderful eyes. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, uh, 
you know, I'm a big stickler of, uh, you know, beauty, diversity, and eyes. And these light colored eyes or, or these mystical colored eyes is something that, that it really, it really intrigues, intrigues me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely love uh, eyes. Uh, and then so the doctor had these eyes standing out and it caught my attention. And uh, so we were, I bet then I was so, oh, you're not going to believe this. I was so not feeling well. And with this type of treatment, you know, there's two things that you, you know, to prepare for your treatment is, I call it the B and B's now. What I have to remember is that I have to have my bladder full, you know, just like before you're urinating, it's got to be full uh, because the way they explain it is the radiation needs a, a buffer so you don't get burned. So uh, your bladder has to be full and your bowel has you, you need to have had a bowel movement with a, not a lot of particles in, in your system. So what it tells you to do is to have a light meal if you're going to eat breakfast, depending on what time your, your treatment is in the morning. Make sure to realize you don't want a lot of stuff left in your bowel. So that we were talking about that and then, you know, the planning. Uh, and then she told me the therapists were going to come out, you know, and, and talk to me. So. Here comes this, uh, this this pretty big young man, and uh, he came out and uh, introduced himself. Was very professional, uh, you know, called me by my appropriate name, my surname. And then, uh, you know, I looked up at him, and it says he's got these eyes that were kind of light colored on a dark skinned man. And and I was going, wow, you know. So right now, I'm seeing that the doctor had these eyes. The therapist had these eyes. And so he's escorted me back into, you know, part of what I have to do for this treatment is uh, they have to be real specific. So they, I guess they scanned my bowel and everything to see where I was, if I needed to drink more water or whatever. And then they, it showed me on where they wanted me to be for my preparation to come in to actually start the radiation. So. The treatment, you know, the treatment could be relatively quick if you come prepared. If you don't come prepared, what happens is you've got to drink more water. You may have to, you know, go to the restroom to clean out your bowel, all of that stuff, right? So they were teaching me. Another thing that they had to do is get me in the actual position of, uh, you know, finding the specific area of where they're going to target uh, the radiation, folks. I'm scared to death. You're talking about proton beam radiation, external radiation. Uh, and just to give you kind of a, 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 an explanation or some more information is uh, the treatment I'm at is I had a radical surgery first. They found more cancer. Uh, and actually, the cancer may be residual around my prostate area and my lymph nodes. I know there was the lymph nodes. They took out two lymph nodes for the surgery, uh, but with those lymph nodes, what occurred was the fact that those were clean. So we were on a real positive kick and, and, and believing that I was cancer-free uh, until you know they, they sent my specimens to the laboratory and found out that there was more uh, actually taking uh, another PET scan. Uh, it's called a PSMA, prostate specific, and I forgot the last two, but they give you some nuclear medicine that goes in you and it's supposed to make your insides glow and tell you. So they found uh, several more spots of cancer that are on my lower uh, area, my pelvic area to the left. Uh, and so you know, that gives you kind of where they're going to be targeting a lot of this radiation. Uh, so what they did was kind of, you know, and I've got scars, you know, from the surgery, which is, pre which is pretty wild. From the surgery, I have five scars. It's almost like a W on my belly. You know, they're dots because the surg surgery was done at San Francisco Veterans Administration uh, out there by the beach, Baker's Beach and stuff. And, uh, 
they used uh, a robot to do this radical prostatectomy and that robots, uh, I believe they call it Da Vinci, the Da Vinci robot. And hey, all I can say is I thought they got it. And when they found more cancer, you know, I've been on, continued on this journey. Uh, before I go on, I want to talk about my emotions during this. You know, I told you how I'm kind of all whacked out with uh, uh, the Eligard with the, the hormonal treatment. Yeah, it's just so I was reassured by the doctor that, you know, once we start this treatment, uh, those side effects will, will gradually reduce, I should say. Ah, I should say. Uh, yeah, it's quite a bit. I, I, I can't wait. But as far as emotional, it's, I'm just glad I got the support. So I have my Veterans Administration group. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm doing a recovery group that has been real powerful over the last several years. And we've built some really good friendships uh, with fellow vets and, and definitely want to share that share our experiences to the VA uh, for having such an outstanding staff to uh, help us with our daily, with living life uh, and the challenges that arise during life. So, so what occurred then is uh, I used that meeting, I used those groups actually to talk about the cancer and the manhood issues and, you know, uh, and trying not to, hit the negative path that negative path it brings you all the way down you feel like shit. you want I, I, come on folks uh i don't want to feel like shit. yeah i may have pain but if i let my i let that pain override my whole day it's going to be a shitty day and and i don't want that so what i tend to do is focus on okay if i got these pains i i got it i've got to find a way just like i'm maturing i'm getting a little older uh, there are things that are occurring uh, in this whole aging process where I'm not as agile. I can't pick up a lot of weight. I'm, I'm, you know, and I've reached out to some friends about doing, you know, some professional body, you know, strengthening and also uh, actually getting a good nutritional thing. So all you red meat eaters out there, watch the hell out. Uh, so I'm, I'm primarily trying to eat more plant based, uh, food, vegetables, uh, meat, uh, I'm still a carnivore, but I, I have been able to, uh, separate myself from, uh, beef. <laughs> I may have it, you know, once in a blue moon, but, but at this point, I'm, you know, I'm trying to really change my diet and with that. Uh, manage the weight, you know, because it is like I told you, it's I'm gaining weight in places where I never thought I'd gain weight. And it's scary. And then the manhood issues and, you know, there's there's some leakage from this stuff, man. And uh, I never thought I'd be the little old dude walking around with a damn diaper and, uh, and you know, go into one of the markets. Uh, but, you know, you learn to adapt, I think a big thing in the military is, hey, shit's going to change. You either adapt with it or you fall apart. And I'm not going to fall apart. I'm going to adapt and I'm going to conquer. And, and part of the emotional part of this is to, you know, let go and give it to a spirit above that is greater than anything I could ever do. Uh, I'm guided by faith got a lot of hope. Uh, one thing I pride myself upon right now is kind of a bit of laughter. So I, they, and I'll get to this right before I, I close this taping. Anyway, so um, I got in there, we were doing all that. And then here comes the tattoo part. So they had the, you know, tattoo, but I, I really, I was, a, oh, they, you know, in some areas, I feel like, uh, you know, I had the tattoos from the prostate surgery itself, and then now I got these additional tattoos. I feel like a geographic map on the front of my body. You know, I've got all this stuff. So anyway, so they were explaining, and then another uh, therapist for the radiation came in, and, and I believe she was either Latin culture or whatever. I don't want to assume or, you know, anything. But when she was talking... <laughs> 
I could have swore her eyes were similar to the other therapists and were similar to the doctor. So anyway, to make this whole story short, this is a shorter, uh, and no puns, guys. Don't talk about short jokes or don't talk about bad jokes, okay? Yeah, I yes, I can dish it out and I can take it. So I definitely under know where there's gonna be a whole specific thing about the issues of man and stuff, but this this radiation uh <laughs> it was so crazy. I mean, I went through it, everybody had that. I was finished, still feeling a little, you know used the restroom and was able to take off. But as I was leaving, this vision came into my mind. And I'll tell you, it blew my mind. It came up like a, a black and white film, OK? Not talking race. I'm talking black and white film. For you that are a little more mature, you know, we before color TV, there was black and white. So all of this stuff projected, then I went to the eyes and then all of a sudden my, my mind took me into something some of us know is the twilight zone. This thinking went crazy and, uh, and the way my freedom and I, you know, the way I feel free spirited is, is just, you know, I got to give credits to uh, uh, Melissa Saya Thompson at, at uh, my my favorite, the most loving, uh, uh, most kick ass. I mean, I, I, how do you put love and kick ass together? I don't know, but kudos go out to uh, Melissa and uh, Empower House Acting Studio. Uh, she is amazing. She learned, but she helped me learn that you know what, you're free. So, you know, now it's something occurred in my mind and I'm free and I can talk. I feel, you know what, you take my information and try to screw me over. You know what? Karma's going to get you. You know, I, I, I hope it doesn't come to that point. But, you know, all of this stuff, I feel free. And, and for the guys, for you guys going through this, listen, you know, it, it's a mindset, man. It's a mindset. You got to be strong. You got to fight those urges to get your ass down and in the dumps. I tell you, learn to accept that this is going to be a little bit of work. Move forward and learn how to laugh. Okay? So my whole experience is one of the biggest things in my life right now is I feel fantastic. So just laughing and making things into a comedy. You know, and, and, and getting back to it, black and white picture, vision, boom, TV show, Rod Serling's Twilight Zone. I'm in a whole other, I see the episode that I was in. It, it may be 2022 version of this episode. I don't know. Uh, more to come later. Uh, anyway, so I, I'm visioning that episode. I don't know the name of it. Maybe some of you out there might recognize. It. It's when this dude was in an operating room. I think he was a military airman or whatever. He's in this room and all these doctors are working, you know, surgical, whatever, right? And so what I, you know, and I may have the whole story wrong, but this is what I remember. What I remember, now go back to what I told you. Every one of them had some form of these eyes, right? And this episode was the episode that said, wait a minute, this is a human. And then he was being pinprocked by aliens, right? And so my whole mind has gone, okay, I'm going to an airbase. We don't know what the hell's happening at airbases. They may have some secret, secret thing. And I just became a guinea pig in some alien resurrection shit. So I'm cracking up, man. I, I'm cracking up. I, I had a rough day. I did end up with some sleep, but I'll tell you what, I was cracking up and I woke up with the joy of the world. So what I want to tell you, find the joy in the world and not the evil, right? Find the joy in the world and step, get, stop tripping over trivial shit. You know, we can make a mole, we can make a mountain out of a little, oh, I, I, I stepped on a piece of shit. When all you got to do is wipe the shit up and move on, okay? So with me, this is the advice. 
the suggestion, this is how I'm doing this right now. I am grateful when I go to sleep at night, I reflect on my day. Did I do something positive? Did I complete at least one task? You know, I'm retired. I said, shit, I got to be busy. You know, I got to So now I'm getting involved in more of the, you know, artsy stuff. You know, the freakers. Some people are calling me eccentric Carl. So, hey, <laughs> whatever floats your butt up. But what I, what I do know... And then once again, it goes back to Melissa uh, Isaiah Thompson, right? It goes back that she instilled in me the ability to be free, to be a free thinker, to not get caught, use my experiences of life. And believe you me, it's been a lot and I'm going through this new experience and it's not the easiest thing in the world either, right? So anyway, she taught me one other thing, and, I, and this is what I'm going to end on, folks. And any questions, you know, hey, link up with me, come see me, you know, uh, message me. This is going to be a public video. So anyway, guys, what she left me with is you are good just the way you are. Find peace in your heart and free your mind from all the bureaucracy and stuff that is driving you nuts. If it's an insane world, do you have to be insane? Question, right? No, you have to learn to adapt to insanity. Well, right now, my insanity is dealing with prostate cancer. I'm either going to live my life or I'm going to get busy dying. And believe you me, you're going to have me around here for a long time because I don't plan on dying soon. So follow me, folks. Uh, if you got concerns, you know, I mean, be real. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I want is genuine. You know, I know there's going to be some fakers, some haters, some all this. Hey, listen, we live in a tough world. Isn't it nicer to have a conversation where, you know what, if you got a different opinion than I do, well, more power to you. All I can share is what's in me. All I can change is what's around me. So, you know, I've learned a lot. And uh, I want you to learn from me. If you're down and out and feel that there's no hope, let me tell you, there is. But it starts with you. And be free. I love you. Bye.